Okay, in this lecture we'll be talking about um, student reflections and how to improve student reflections. So let's start with our discussion. Um, so the first question is really why should students reflect? Why is that an important component? Well, we know that student reflections really improve learning and the retention of information. When we ask students to reflect, we're engaging their brains again with that content. We're solidifying that content in their minds. And we're also asking them to be metacognitive and think about what they know and what they don't know. So it's really one of the major ways in which we know um, that we can improve the retention of that learning. So it helps students develop critical thinking skills and metacognition and self-assessment, all of those things we really want them to be able to do. We want them to know when they know something and when they don't know something. So how many of you guys have, you know, listened to a lecture, been like, oh yeah, I understand, and then gotten to the test and been like, oh wait, yeah, it turns out I didn't really understand any of that stuff. We want to prevent that. We want students to know when they know something and know when they need to study more or know when they don't need to, when they need more help or more assistance. So we want to help with that self-assessment, that um, calibration of what they know and don't know. So reflection helps students do this and it's a skill that must be taught. It's a skill that they need to develop. And through assessment and through self-assessment, we can help with that process for students. So some ways to improve assess, um, for improve reflection. Um, learning logs is the first one. Um, and a learning log is simply a journal entry in which students write down what they know or what they understand and then you as a teacher respond. So by making those learning logs, asking students to reflect on their learning, we can implement reflective practices with students. Um, Exit slips, again, not every exit slip would promote reflection, but they can, especially if we ask students, like, what do you understand? What do you know? What questions do you have? And getting students in the habit of reflecting at the end of lessons. Um, things like, what do you understand? What questions remain? And if we are repetitive in asking those questions each time at the end of each lesson, students will get in the habit of thinking about those questions and anticipating them and knowing how to answer them. Um, practice builds that habit. Reflection papers. I know as education students, you're like groaning because you write so many reflection papers. But I think that it's important to also not just say a reflection paper, but think about what we mean by reflection. And that's why um, in this class, I tried to reframe reflection into connect and reflect so that I'm giving you a purpose. I'm giving you a way to think about how does this reflect and connect to what you're going to do in the future. How um, giving a student a purpose for that reflection um, will help enhance their learning. Um, and then self-assessment rubrics. So giving students um, the rubric ahead of time to fill out for themselves. And I really like this for a couple of reasons. One is, as a teacher, if a student forgets a piece of an assignment, I always feel bad like giving them a zero. But um, if they've already filled out the rubric ahead of time and given themselves a zero, it makes me feel better about it, right? Um, and it also, I think, helps students learn to calibrate what their assessments are to what the teacher has done. And I mean, I think in general what we know, right, is that students um, tend, to, poor students tend to over assess and better students tend to under assess. Um, so what we want to do is, um, is help students kind of calibrate that so that they can have a more accurate picture of where their strengths and weaknesses are on work and only by practicing will they be able to do that. It also helps key them in to the things that you're looking for. So even if you give them a rubric ahead of time and tell them what you'll be assessing them on, there's no guarantee that students are actually looking at that rubric to plan their assessments, especially our weaker, more vulnerable students. By having them complete that self-assessment rubric, we're kind of guaranteeing that they at least looked at that rubric before they turned in their work. Um, portfolio guidelines and reflective statements, when we are talking about and implementing a portfolio system and we're asking students to include work and reflect on that work, we're obviously asking them to reflect and think about ways in which um, they can improve, thinking about what they want to include in that portfolio, and that will um, help guide them into setting goals and thinking about their futures. 
So are there other ways that we could um, increase reflection for students and other ways that you've seen teachers increase student reflections in the classrooms that you've been in for field one or field two? Um, I hope you came up with some great ideas on student reflection and you've thought about the importance of student reflection in your own classroom practice. Um, and I look forward to seeing your work this week. Bye.